we only have one Vista partition. It's really just looking at this virtual file we've created. So, And it's not doing anything to your hard drive. It's just creating this file. So you don't have to be too concerned. Now, of course, if you were on a real system, this would be kind of a scary moment because you might have data or whatever on here. We don't have to worry about this. So um, creating this new virtual machine um, is just creating a file on our hard drive. Uh, so tab over to yes, write the changes to disk. It's going to partition the software, jump through some other hoops. I will pause the recording and come back. All right, the next thing it's going to ask for, uh, and the previous process did take a while, as a matter of fact, because that sets up the whole base system. So that could take several minutes. Um, and now it's asking you to set up users and passwords. So you just need to give the, the uh, username and the password. The first prompt is for the full username. I'm just going to call them user1. Um, next prompt is actually for the um, user ID login. I'm just going to let that go to user1 again. Um, and for a password, you know, for these uh, virtual machines on your desktop, unless you really do have a security issue, I would suggest you choose something simple so you don't forget it, because if you pick something hard here and um, you forget it or mistype it, then it's a little bit difficult to recover it later. So I'm just going to choose password. And I'm going to re-verify that. And of course, you wouldn't want to ever do that if this were actually a real system someplace that had some important stuff on it. But just um, so now it asks you if you want to configure your home directory of encryption. Um, you know, again, for for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to say no, don't do that. But um, uh, the options there, if you think you need to. Now it's going to go through a bunch more configuration. Um, the first thing it wants to know is if you're using a proxy, and in this particular case, um, with a, a, a virtual box installation, you're not. So just press the tab key to get over the continue button. Um, and I will pause the recording here because this next step takes a while. And we're back. Now I'll warn you that the previous step could take as long as a half an hour, so um, so just be prepared for that. <clears throat> now this is new, I think, with um, 9.10, maybe 9.04. Uh, there's an automatic update option. I'm going to recommend you don't take that. Uh, for our purposes, uh, uh, you can just do manual updates uh, and manage them yourself. It's not that big a task. Um, so it's going to um, now select and install some additional software. This step won't take quite so long. Uh, okay, now you get to choose some additional software. You know, you can take a look at the list if you already know in advance that you're going to need some of these. Then um, uh, the way to do it, um, don't press enter yet. Um, arrow up or down um, to the, the selection that you want to add. And then when you find it, uh, press the space bar to put a mark there. Now, I almost always find LAMP useful. Um, and um, the uh, open SSH server, that the open SSH server allows you to do file transfers between your host and guest system uh, a little bit more easily. So I'm going to go with those, and as I say, if you know that you don't need those or you want some others, now is the place to add them. Uh, LAMP, by the way, is the, um, uh, adds the Apache web server, uh, MySQL database, and the PHP uh, scripting, uh, scripting language. Uh, so when you're ready uh, and you've got the one selected, you can press tab to get to the continue button and then press enter to continue with the installation. Uh, it will install some more software uh, that you just selected. First thing it's going to ask for is a password for the uh, MySQL uh, root user. So you probably, you can skip this step if you want to, but I'm going to recommend you go ahead and give it an easily, easily remembered password. Um, And then you confirm that. Okay, and it's going to then continue to install the rest of that software. I will pause the um, uh, pause the recording again. All right, we have finished the installation. We need to reboot the machine. Um, you may want to go ahead and and um, um, unmount the CD uh, to do that. Remember uh, the right control keys what releases the mouse so you get it back, and then you can come down here and right click that CD icon. Uh, and you can click unmount the CD DVD ROM. So um, the ISO file is no longer uh, um, connected. Now just uh, again click in the window to capture the keyboard uh, and then click continue and the software will just uh, do a quick finish up and reboot. And we'll go ahead and let that run so you can see how that works. Um, see what a typical typical load looks like. 
Uh, now, if right about this point you get uh, an error that um, you know some option is not installed and the whole thing doesn't work at all, uh, it's probably because you forgot to check that PAE um, um, checkbox we ran over in the very beginning of the video. So go back and take a look at that and um, uh, see if that isn't the problem. <clears throat> but this is now what a what a typical typical boot looks like, um, and we come to a login screen. Uh, and so we can just sign in as our primary user, the one that we set up. And the first thing that we want to check here is what our IP address is. And we do that with the ifconfig -F -F command. Uh, and we see that we have a local address in the in the 10.0 10 um, 10 uh, private network running here. And so the, the server is actually running, but it doesn't help us much because we can't really get at that little private subnet from our host machine. Uh, so what we're going to do now uh, is we're going to shut this down and we're going to go back and reset uh, the option um, for uh, bridge networking uh, and give it another shot. So the way to shut down, we can do a sudo... P, capital P now. Be careful, Linux is uh, case sensitive. Uh, and we use the sudo command because the uh, in, in Ubuntu Linux um, the root is disabled by default. You can enable it again if you want to, but you need sudo in order to execute any type of command that requires root level privileges. It's going to ask for the password uh, and it's going to commence the uh, shutdown. Okay, now what we need to do is go back, and with this machine selected, we need to take a look at network again. Uh, and so we'll pop that option up. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to switch from uh, NAT, Network Address Translation, to uh, Bridged Networking. And that's going to allow this virtual machine to get a, a um, an address from whatever DHCP server is, is on your network. Um, on, as I mentioned before, on a home system, uh, this is not going to give you any problems. You're getting a DHCP IP address uh, from your little home router. If you're in a university situation, um, you may need to um, uh, register the MAC address of the virtual machine. Now, that could have been obtained um, in the previous screen with that ifconfig command. Uh, one of the things it shows is the MAC address. If you're in a university network, you may have to actually register that uh, before you'll be able to pick up a DHCP uh, lease, but at any rate, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to um, uh, a bridged adapter. Uh, and the other thing we need to do is make sure, if, especially if you're working on a wireless machine, you may have more than one um, uh, one network connection. You might have a uh, you might have a little jack for an Ethernet cable, and you might also have wireless. So if be sure to pick whichever connection you're actually using to connect to your network. And then, of course, if you go back and forth, you'll have to come and change this option. Uh, but I'm going to choose my wireless link because that's how I'm connecting uh, on this particular network. Uh, and click OK. And that really is all there is to it. Uh, now I'm going to start up the, uh, start up the uh, virtual machine again. And we'll do this, this little load and make sure that we get, um, we get a good address. And we will again click in the box here to uh, uh, capture the keyboard. Okay, we're going to run that ifconfig command again. Uh, and again, now we see that we have, um, get the mouse here, we have a, a good IP address on our uh, uh, current uh, local network. Uh, we also see that the um, had you needed it before the first time you booted uh, the MAC, MAC address I was telling you about that you might need to register if you're at work or in a university situation or something is this number right up here. And that pretty much wraps it up for this installation. Uh, again, you can um, uh, shut down with the um, shutdown command, sudo.
that'll shut down the process and um, uh, now you're ready to install pretty much whatever it is you need to uh, you need to do with this if you have some applications to install uh, just start it up and have at it